What's new for today? Today we have something plane related. This is a GPS uh, with return to home system that also has on-screen display capabilities if you run an FPV system. with. Lots of stuff. Lots of stuff in one package. Will it work on my Spectrum radio? It can. It can work with Spectrum, um, S-Bus, and PPM. I'm sold. Hey guys, Basil and Will with Grayson Hobby, and today we have a plug and play FPV system with OSD, return to home, the whole gamut for your airplane that works with Spectrum. So this video, we're gonna do a high level. We're gonna show you how it works. We're gonna have Will hook it up. He's never seen one before until today or yesterday. So if you ever guys ever see the FPV drones, this is basically a dummy down version. Actually, it's not a dummy down version. What do you call no, it? No, this is a plane. Yeah. I mean, this is a non, you don't need a computer. Right. You just use a basic program card that you can get with yeah. it. So if you're looking to get into FPV, looking to get the cool uh, uh, OSD systems, such as the speeds, the headings, the return to home, all that good stuff, this product is for you, especially if you don't want to have all that hours of YouTube homework. Take the complexity, cut it in a third, and put it in the plane and enjoy it. All right. So you got your flight controller here, you got a current sensor, a GPS puck, and... And it works with Spectrum. A program card. <laughs> and it works with Spectrum. And it will work with Spectrum, uh, S-Bus, and PPM. In the video, we used one of our locals' house-built planes. Um, this is one he's built for a lot of club members. If anybody ever goes to Perry, you'll see a million of these on the table that people are buying up like crazy. Um, but this real video, this is perfect airframe with very brightly colored surfaces with extra throw so we can show you guys how to set up this gyro. It's a because you set it up on a normal plane, it might not show up in the video. So we did this for this reason. What we got here is your normal plane. You know, everything's normal controls, right? Full manual. Grant, Grant these are very exaggerated <laughs> controls so you guys can see in the video. Um, you have gyro mode. Which keeps so it. So stabilizer like All a gyro, right. like regular gyros. And then you have panic recovery safe mode. Um, like you have in a lot of Horizon jobs. So that will turn the plane right side so up? So level the plane out, yeah. Yep, cool. A lot of times, setting up my airplanes with INAV and uh, mission plane, all that stuff, you need to have a GPS signal for this to kick on and to work, for it to even go into, into return to home mode. With that being said, if you're in your house, you may or may not get a signal. If you're in your basement like me, you won't get a signal. In my office area where I sometimes play with this stuff, I get signals about 50% of the time. If you, once you hook it up, your best bet is to bench test this outside in a clear view of the satellites. I just threw this on a plane to help show you guys a couple things that we've uh, seen that a lot of people question about um, that have already purchased this unit. Uh, so basically guys, keep in mind there are multiple flight modes. When you're in uh, normal mode is you want to set up, typically take the plane off, get it flying in this mode. Flip it to normal mode for the gyro. This will tell you if you have anything wrong. If you have the directions wrong, et cetera, which hopefully you can check it on the ground and you know, kind of eyeball it. And I'll show you a tip on that as well. But if something was wrong, you could immediately flip back into normal mode and fly it, get it down on the ground and change the programming without destroying the plane. And then the third mode is the safe recovery. So once you get everything set up, that's when you get the, oh no, I need to level it back out. And one thing to keep in mind guys, when you are in the safe mode or aerobatic mode, um, you will have what they call servo drift. If you're testing it on the ground, you will see this. It doesn't happen in the air. It's because the gyro is always trying to find neutral. And so if I put it in this mode, you'll see after some movement, servos tend. Well, it might not Except do Except for when we try. Okay, see how it's slowly walking? Yeah. That's because it's trying to find it, but it hasn't corrected. This thing thinks, hey, I'm going to correct myself what's going on, and it's going to continue drifting the servos. Seeing the servos slowly move to one direction and stopping because they run out of travel is normal, okay? Don't freak out about that. That is something in the gyro settings. Once it's in the air, it doesn't do that. It's just because it's on the ground and the gyro is always trying to correct. We got the, the gyro controller. We have a current sensor. We got the GPS puck. Okay. Mail to mail servo headers, so that way if you're running into a flight control or to a receiver, etc. We have this very, very important piece of documentation called a manual. Now that's a very good um, manual. And guys, there's a lot of words on it, but you gotta read this. Um, read it. I know we screwed up once or twice until we actually went back and read the manual. Believe it or not, there's several key things in there. If you don't read it, you will screw something up. So make sure you check that out. Don't skim. All right, very important. Don't skim this part. Don't skim and go from one, two, three to seven or eight. And this is why. Keep in mind, just like we did here, um, 
I know it's possible because I had zero idea on how to use this thing until I read this words, okay? Um, I highlighted stuff. I actually went through and I did my YouTube University Google educa education by highlighting the key things and going back as I was setting up and checking it. Um, I actually recommend doing that to anyone because this is a lot. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, for someone that's never set one of these up before, um, it's gonna be a lot. It's gonna be, you're gonna read this two or three times, but once you get it set up and have it figured out, it's not that bad and you'll be able to set up a bunch of these things, no problem. Comes with 3M double-sided uh, mounting foam. This is like a, a spongy kind of foam with double-sided tape on it. Um, Dynam stresses in the manual to use this, not other generic double-sided tapes, because if it's too thin, it transfers too much vibration, it'll mess with the gyro. If it's too thick or too soft, um, it can deaden the, um, the, the gyro vibration or to help stabilize it. Yeah. So you wanna make sure you use the tape that comes with it to mount it for the uh, flight controller part. You definitely don't want to hot glue that directly. Yeah, do not glue it directly. Do, don't hot glue it because you, otherwise it won't, won't isolate any vibrations. Most of the planes, because of the props aren't balanced, stuff like that, it'll transfer enough vibrations that can mess with the gyro. So in order to have perform better, make sure you use the included tape. So the next thing here is the power management unit. Um, this is basically your current sensor. It'll feed telemetry data from your battery voltage, etc., into the flight controller. Which then you read on your goggles. That if you have on-screen display system, yes. yes. Finally, the last thing here is the program card. And this is the optional part that you would get um, if you need the whole system, otherwise you don't need this down the road. Um, but for setting up one, you do need to use one of these. And there's some pretty critical setup to, that you would use for this. So real quick, not only does this programming card work with this system, it also works with the other gyros from Dynam that Yeah, are, if you got like a radio fly plane and stuff like that. But it also has, um, yeah, some- uh, It also has a cell checker built in, which is kind of cool. Yeah. So it does, it does multiple things. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that, okay. Very cool. Yeah. And then if you're programming with the ESC, you got the ESC, either opto or regular right there to program the speed controls. Um, That'd be and then next time. the USB to program this. All right. What we have here is for receiver style, you have, if you have a serial receiver like this um, from one of the Spectrum satellites, this is one of the little FPV drone racing ones. You got a satellite port right there, okay? If you're not using this style receiver, say you're using one that has a PPM or SBUS output, this happens to be the RS610, for example. It's just one of the ones we have here. Before we continue, no, this is not a full range receiver. This is just for no, video. No, it's not yeah. long range receiver. It's just to get the system set up. Um, yeah, you're gonna want a long range diversity. This is not diversity. But if you just want to return to home, you know, that's perfect. Yeah, but. so if you're flying at the park, you're fine. So you got your ground, your middle row is positive five volt, and then the signals are down here. So the first thing we're gonna do is plug in our, the, in this case, S bus receiver, or if you're doing a satellite, Let's just do the satellite, keep it wires cleaner. How about that? Mm -hmm. That's what I use the satellite. Um, the next thing I do, the airspeed is still under development, it has not been released yet, so you're gonna skip the third pin here. So it depends, and then you got VOL, current, GRT, L, and, and then GPS. So the VOL, believe it or not, is the voltage. Volt, VOL is voltage, and the current, so that's gonna be. So when you look at the con connector and it has the little arrow, like the manual says, it's the signal ground. Now they kind of misworded there in my opinion. It should not say the word signal anywhere in that because signal's over here. It's the ground pin. So the little triangle is this pin right here in this top corner. So it's gonna go along the ground. So your arrow here plugs into here. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. The next thing is your GPS. Which this is kind of optional, but without that, you don't have return to home and have a lot of the features. You still can use it as the gyro. Comes with it, might as well use right. it, right? Okay. So you got the current sensor plugged in, uh, empty port, which is used for the Detrim radios if you have one of those for data transmission. The GPS plugs in the bottom. Again, the arrow plugs into the side with the ground wires. And take note, when you are mounting the GPS, there's an arrow on it as well. All about these arrows today, right? Um, this needs to face the front of the plane. So the wire comes out the back, the arrow faces the front of the plane. And from there, there's not a whole lot. You got your outputs here. So probably your servos in it. Yeah, this is um, up to eight servos. Okay, so so again, signal goes to the inside, five volt, and then ground. Hold on a sec. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What is my aileron? What is my so channel one is aileron? Okay, where do I find that? Manual. Okay, aileron elevator throttle is channel three, rudder is channel four. So this is actually a ten channel receiver, but 
two channels are digitally reserved for, for the gyro function. Your switching of the radio. So, yeah. so even though it says eight outputs, it's actually 10 channels used up to in your radio. So you would need 10 channels on your radio to be able to use all eight outputs. Okay. Um, so flaps, retracts, stuff so like yeah, that would be. So yeah. All right, we got that hooked up. How do I see the uh, on-screen display? What, what, how do I, how does that work? Two plugs. Two plugs. Well, first you need something that's not included. Yeah, so this is optional. Woo, flash the screen. Yeah. Or it's not optional, it's just not included. Not included, woo, <laughs> flash the screen. Okay, you have two things here. You have video in, video out. Video in is video input, that's from the camera. Video out is the output and that's to the video transmitter. Okay, all right, so what we have here, we have this little plug and play kit. It's not the greatest stuff in the world, but it's a plug and play kit. So tell us about this plug and play kit. Okay, this is a little setup we have here. Definitely. Basically, this is a plug and play setup with a couple of adapters here. It is an extension to go, a male to male extension. This is a inline power tap, so we don't have to do any soldering. And then this is a camera system that we sell. With this here, you have, this camera is actually runs on five volts, which is good because our flight controller provides five volts output. Yay. So it's very key. That's important because you put anything else in there, it will, may not work. Correct. Okay. So we plug in voltage in or video, I'm sorry, video in. That's going to provide the five volt setting video transmit and ground to the camera. Now, the cool thing about this video out, the middle pin does not provide five volts. Otherwise, you'd be very limited in what VTX is and all that you can use. So it's actually a dead pin. You don't have to worry about cutting any red wires or anything like that. Um, you're able to just plug it in. Okay. But you're gonna plug this in here, and mainly you just need the ground and video um, here to, ha to have a common ground. And then from this, this is where we st spice it up a little bit. This guy right here plugs in here. Now we plug in the battery here, speed control on this side. So what this is gonna do, this is gonna give you your amp draw, yeah. per amp draw, through your goggles so you can actually see what's going on. And guys, you wanna put the power tap downstream of the current sensor, otherwise, um, cause the VTX does pull current. Otherwise you're not gonna get the current that the VTX is pulling off of here and your numbers will get skewed a little bit. Not that these draw a lot of current, but it'll keep it more accurate. Mm -hmm. You can put it on either side, it'll still work, but it's best to put it downstream. Go over setting it up because there's a lot to do and mainly if you read the manual, go over it, um, it kind of explains itself and it's very dependent on each aircraft. So there's not much I can do with setup video for this, but I'm gonna show you kind of what I'm talking about with- The programming card. The programming card. Plug in your battery, and then we're gonna plug in the USB. In, the, in that order. It's gonna initialize, and then you'll have various options here. Uh, fly mode, yaw gain, roll gain, pitch gain, roll offset, pitch offset, uh, mounting direction. That's important. Wing type. Yeah. And then, um, what does it say? Cruise, Cruise velocity. Up. Ooh, these are new fe features. Uh, Next thing to go right. over is the fly mode is basically that three position switch that you're programming. And then, um, you see how it's off and then you got normal and safe. Um, you can change these depending on how you want the switch to go, etc. But basically off is the gyro disabled. That way it flies like a normal plane even with all this stuff hooked up. That's basically your I set it up wrong and I need to get it back in to where I can land it, that's, switch. And that's how you should made in the plane. Um, yeah, thing. you should take the plane up in normal and then switch it at safe distance in there, switch it and be ready to switch it back off if you have a problem. Because um, if you don't set this up right, it's gonna fight you to the ground. Um, normal and then safe. Safe is like a panic recovery and all that and that's one of the flight modes there. So you can set it, yeah. And then there's what's it Yeah, use? there's a couple different other, acro, safe normal off all right one thing so we got it working here now we have this set in the aileron channel but as you can see we have a red light here and we have no servo movement so what we need to do to arm it rudder bottom right throttle wow, low magic light turns whitish green bluish green again i'm cut partially colored blind. again there's there. a chart it tells you exactly which color represents which mode it's in and so that's going to be the blue mode and that's going to be auto balance safe yeah, I don't know if you can hear it. If you guys can hear it, the servo's moving. I didn't put a horn on it. But. Okay, so that's that. The step-by-step -step setup at this is per the manual, and they are spot on this. You're gonna create the model on your radio. You're gonna take your radio, set it up, set your base uh, setup. You're gonna assign your servos, etc. Um, you're gonna 
program your channel five and channel six, your th two position and three position switches accordingly. Um, as it says in the manual, you're going to mount the flight controller to the plane, set the orientation, uh, or mount it to the plane. Then you're going to program it, connect to the program card. You're gonna set the throws in the radio that you want. You're gonna set the uh, reverse directions on the radio how you need. Then you're gonna set with the flight control or the module, you're going to set up the reverse directions, the gyro gain directions, etc. Um, and then you're gonna set the wing type, all that. And then from there, you're gonna check it. Well, as we showed in the video, you're gonna check the control service, make sure they're set up properly. And then the next step up is final gain adjustments. Take it up and fly, test it, take it down and adjust again. Yeah. And then once you get it fine-tuned, you'll have an awesome flying plane with GPS, return to home,